what state of matter could be so improbable that time had to call it an empirical difficulty in the description of the world. Of course, the big anomaly of natural science, life, animate matter. Today, today we will see what part life occupies in our hierarchical structure of the world. Hello and welcome to Six Dimensional Color. My name is Hannes Schmidt and I explain to you Bokertheim's worldview in understandable language and with clear examples. It's great to have you back on this fascinating topic and I hope I can inspire, I can inspire many more people with the works of Bokertheim. If you want to contribute to that, give my video a like, subscribe to the channel and share it with others. And very special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If we don't directly kill and dissect a living being, we observe something obvious. It behaves completely different than we would expect from all the physical laws we know from inanimate nature, from inanimate objects. Life simply does what it wants. Living systems are far from thermodynamic equilibrium. And even today, today we have an even vaster wealth of data about the underlying molecular and physical mechanisms, much more than Heim had available in his time or that he was aware of. But even with this huge amount of data we have today, we quickly get to the boundaries of the fact that I tried to show in the last video that you cannot deduct the behavior of a more complex system from its less complex components. It's simply not possible, it doesn't work that way. I had shown you the totality schematic for the physical world, which is arranged along the axis x5. And the whole physical world Heim subsummed under the, the term of the realm alpha, the physis. And now let's see where Heim makes the leap from inanimate to animate matter. He does that on biological macromolecules, that is, biological enzymes and information carrying DNA. They are the smallest units that actually carry something like life. Of course, that's limited to their catalytic or autocatalytic activity that they perform. They of course consist of elements that are part of the totality 6, that of molecules or macromolecules. But due to their interesting properties, I'm coming to that in a moment, we are introducing now a new totality 7. And that's a true totality 7, nothing to do with the pseudo totality 7, in which we put all the anthropogenic artifacts. So we enter now a new realm of our description of the world, and that's the realm of life or BIOS. And Heim abbreviated that as beta. He liked to abbreviate things, he liked to abbreviate things with Greek letters. First, let us look at the DNA. Of course, DNA, you could say, it's composed of, of nucleotide monomers. And the polymerization process itself is also something that could place purely chemically. But the huge difference from, uh, let's say, um, a dead DNA, just a DNA macromolecule of totality 6 to that of a totality 7 is that living DNA carries meaning. It carries information that is meaningful to the organism to which it belongs. Actually, there is even more to that, but that's topic, that's a, that's a very interesting topic and I'm going to, to treat that in another video. Enzymes. On enzymes we find two interesting things that we observe. The first thing is the improbability of the correct folding, which is, has always been subject to much speculation and, and debate. Well, purely thermodynamically, it's highly unlikely that any enzyme would ever reach the, the correct folding state it has to have to perform its enzymatic activity in, inside a cell. But that doesn't seem to be a problem. The vast majority of enzymes, they, they, they reach there eventually. Of course, mainstream bio biology has its models to explain this. There are the so-called chaperones, which are other proteins, other en or enzymes, which, whose function it is to, to help the other enzymes to reach their correct conformation. Well, my, my objection is there, where does the correct confirmation of the chaperones then come from? It's just, well, 
it doesn't it just doesn't add up and the, the the name is a giveaway itself in my opinion because it's like chaperoning scientists not to come up with any illicit ideas about this this whole thing the other interesting thing is the enzyme activity itself because it could be shown in in elaborate experiments that enzyme activity remains at a low level but there remains enzyme activity even if the enzyme is denaturated or the, the uh, active center, which is decisive for the catalytic properties, is destroyed by genetic engineering. So scientists created var variations of an enzyme and uh, knocked out certain, certain amino acids in the active center and to their great amazement and uh, to their great amazement they found that still there was enzyme activity. It was not zero. Of course, they were at a loss to explain this and they found explanations like maybe the whole surface of the enzyme has some catalytic properties itself. But I don't find this very conclusive. But one thing becomes obvious when we hear such explanations. It must always be assumed that there is another mechanism that's not included in, uh, in the logical area which, where, we, where we started, where, the, where scientists started. Heim does nothing else in principle, but he offers a much better, better scheme in which the whole thing works. So after this first jump into the realm of living matter, we can go from a totality 7 to a totality 8, where these, uh, these macromolecules, they form huger structures, like that, of, like that of chromosomes or of virus particles. And then we know larger complexes of such structures, which then form basic metabolic cycles, for example. Th those would be located on a totality 9. Totality 10, then, would house those beings that we know as prokaryotes, that is, cells without a nucleus, like all kinds of bacteria or blue algae. Totality 11, then, is of course the realm of the eukaryotic cells, which contain a cell nucleus, which houses the chromosomes. And uh, they also, contain, they also con contain things like chloroplasts or, or mitochondria, which are actually remnants of, of prokaryotic symbionts. Now we can leave the microscope and go to things that we can actually see with our own eyes. In totality 12, cells of the same type go into symbiosis and form homogenic tissues. Those would be primitive fungi or social associations of algae. In totality 13, different types of tissue form heterogenic tissues. And here we get higher fungi and plant life. Totality 14, this is the jump to actual animal life. And uh, we would have all things like, like um, worms, snails, corals, etc. If, we, if they were part of something yet larger, those would be, they would have rather the complexity of single standing organs. And totality 15 is the conclusion of the biological realm, because this is something that we know ourselves very well, that's the complete animal body. Our body and that of all other higher animals is the highest level of organization that matter can have. And that's the conclusion for the realm of beta, reaching over, reaching from totalities 7 till 15. So it's nine levels we can distinguish here. One note on that. Hein put quite some brain power into finding this layer structure for the biological realm, but it's not the last thing there is to say about this probably. So if science comes up with biology comes up with new findings, there may be some shifting around here and it's always disputable to where a form of life belongs if it belongs to one level of complexity or the next one. So I'm saying it's not skizzled into stone but it's a very good working hypothesis that we have. In centrometry we can always tell that we go on to a next level if the laws that we're working with don't apply anymore and we have introduced we have to introduce something new. Well we still have to introduce something new after this round beta because we are by far, we are at the end of the description of the material world, for all things that are actually material. But 
we are not at the end of the world at large. So after realms alpha and beta will of course come a realm of gamma. And how this looks like we will see in the next video in six dimensions and in color.